Uh, good morning, everyone. So today I'm going to talk about uh, receiver operating characteristic code and area under the code. So first we go over the basic concepts of the theory, then we will see the real examples in real life, so theory and application. So what we are going to do, the first introduction, um, so first we talk about the definition and how to understand the receive operating characteristic curve, ROC. Then we talk about the area under the curve, AUC. So they go together. So next thing is we talk about the application of ROC and AUC. And after that, we talk about sample size and the power analysis comparing two um, AUCs. First, ROC uh, is shortened for receiver operating characteristic. In statistics, a receive operating characteristic curve or ROC curve is a graphical plot that uh, illustrates the performance of a binary classifier system as its discrimination threshold as, uh, is varied. So ROC analysis provides tools to select possibly optimal models and to discard suboptimal ones independently from and prior to specifying the cost context or the class distribution. So ROC analysis is related to, is related in a direct and natural way to cost benefit analysis of diagnostic decision making. Started in electronic signal detection theory in early 1940s to or through to through 1950s. During World War II, used for detecting enemy objects in battlefields. Then introduced to medicine, radiology, biometrics has become very popular now, particularly in uh, radiology and the imaging, also used in machine learning applications to assess classifiers. cut off points. ROC curve is a plot of sensitivity against one subtract or minus specificity. So you see sensitivity actually is a true positive rate um, TPR. Also uh, one subtract specificity is also called false positive rate. So we're going to discuss more about the sensitivity and the specificity of it. So for the various possible cutoffs on a grid from zero to one. So from here you can see we got the um, unit square here. So the area for the whole unit square should be one. So the, the, the vertical axis is called a sensitivity or a true positive rate. And the horizontal x is called when subtract the specificity is called also it is um, false positive rate. 
So start from the origin from here, 0, 0, to here, 1, 1. Diagnostic utility of the international HIV dementia scale for HIV A, HIV associated, that's a type, HIV associated neurocognitive impairment and the disorder in South Africa. So this is the one simplest case. So this is a simple case. Uh, the leading author, the first author is Dr. Gurking, um, among others, co-authors, uh, published 2014. So the title is this. Um, so it was done in South Africa. So totally, we have 70 participants uh, from an HIV voluntary counseling and testing clinic in Durban, South Africa. Africa. The diagnostic utility of the international HIV dimension scale was uh, analyzed using a, an ROC model. So this is published in the Journal of Neuropsychiatry and the Clinical Neurosciences. So consider diagnostic test for HIV associated to neurocognitive disorder, uh, showing for HACT, International HIV Dementia Scale, uh, IHDS, was used. So we use uh, uh, the cutoff score or point used is 10.5. If we use, use this cutoff, the sensitivity will be 69% and the specificity uh, is 74%. So the test has two possible outcomes. First one, the test is positive. Positive uh, uh, if um, the test score is less or equal to 10.5 suggesting presence of the height. So otherwise, uh, it is negative. If the, the score, the test score greater than 10.5, suggesting the absence of height. So here, we can see that the score, uh, we, we like the score. The, better, uh, the bigger, the larger is better about the test score. So if a small number that indicates we have problems, uh, such disease. An individual can test either positive or negative for height. So this is uh, uh, about the sensitivity and the specificity examples. Um, suppose, maybe is it too small? Can you see that? Uh, can you see it? Okay. So this is uh, uh, a simple example. Another example. Um, so we got uh, the patients got the cancer uh, confirmed by endoscopy. So if positive as confirmed, yes, we got this problem. It is uh, well, having such problem. So the cancer. If negative, then we don't have uh, the, the subject uh, does not have the cancer. So that already confirmed. So no doubt about it. Yes. Yeah. You mean over there? Okay. So can, can you see that? Yes. But, but I can see it. I cannot see it. Oh, oh my, very small. Maybe another one. Let's try this one. Oh, 
Oh, this one is better. Okay. So, so this is a positive, this negative about the cancer that's confirmed by endoscopy. So, so among all those subjects, no matter positive or negative, uh, we we got uh, this is uh, two hundred and three. So among all those subjects, then we do another follicular follicular coat blood test uh, to to test again, uh, maybe positive or negative. So so giving the patients or the subjects having cancer. We do blood test, it can be positive or negative. So what is the sensitivity here? Sensitivity? So sensitivity is de defined as the true positive divided by true positive plus false negative. So, so here, the true positive is here. So totally we have two of them. And so these two, these two, then plus one. That one is false negative, false negative. That means among the, this column, the first column, totally we have three subjects. They all got the, having the cancer. But the test after we have done the blood test, we got two positive, one negative. So sensitivity is what? Sensitivity is just uh, uh, sensi sensitivity is just uh, uh, the proportion or probability of the testing result is positive uh, among all the subjects having the disease or having the cancer here. So, so the probability of positive test giving positive. So positive, positive. Okay. So this is sensitivity. So about 67% this is a sensitivity. So now look at the specificity. Specificity, uh, it is defined as the true negative divided by false positive plus true negative. So here we got 18 false positive and 182 true negative. So it's about 90% sensitivity. So what is the sensi uh, specificity? I'm sorry, specificity. What is the specificity? Specificity is uh, just uh, the proportion or percentage or probability of uh, the test is negative among all the subjects without disease, without disease. So if you try to remember this definition, you just remember double negative or double sign, the subject sign. So negative, 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 negative. For the sensitivity, it's positive, positive. For specificity, it's negative, negative. That means giving negative, your test is also negative. The, what is probability? What is percentage? So if you look at the, the last column, we have two more concepts. One, the first one is positive predictive value. Most often we say PPV, PPV, positive predictive value. So here, we got true positive divided by true positive plus false positive. So from this definition, we can see that what is the positive predictive value? What is that? That means all the patients 20 here, what is 20? So 2 plus 18, that means the test of among all those tests, uh, blood test positive, among all of them. So what is the true positive rate or probability or percentage? So that means this one is high, is better, we like that, 
We like that. So uh, when we talk about the percentage among all positive test results, okay? So another one is the negative predictive value, NPV. NPV is, uh, we work on what? We work on the totally 1 plus 182, 183 subjects, totally, the test, blood test result as negative among all of these among all of this. So how many or what is the percentage among all of the test, positive test results that the true negative, negative. So these two things, we like uh, the number is larger is better. Also these two things are larger better. But you cannot increase these two things, PPV and the NPV at the same time. Also you cannot increase these two numbers at the same time. Most of them, if you increase one of them, another one will go down. So just like uh, two bad guys, you can catch one of them, you cannot catch two of them at the same time. So this is a problem. So this is an uh, example. I try to illustrate how to calculate, how to understand the sensitivity and the specificity. Um, so, the curve usually has a concave shape beginning at the point zero, 0, and ending at the point 1, 1. So, here I use the one terminology is called a concave shape. What is concave shape? Concave, the opposite of the concave is what? The opposite of concave. Convex, that's great, the convex. So concave, uh, roughly speaking, just like a mountain, like a mountain. So convex can be like a, a valley, like this way. So if you, can, if you are confused, you cannot tell which one is concave, which one is convex, you just re remember that the convex can hold water, but the concave can never hold water. Then by this way, you can distinguish, you can remember the difference. So the area under the curve is shown for AUC. So AUC got uh, some uh, different name, some different name. Um, the, the another name is called concordance index C. So in the software SAS output, you can see uh, the output the statistic of uh, the C statistic. So among physicians, doctors, lots of them, they talk about the C statistics. If you, you, you hear somebody talking about the C statistics, so you should understand that the C statistic is just the area under the curve, AUC. At most, 100%, at least, uh, 0%. So that is uh, in the SAS output. You can see that I will show you a little bit so the area and the, the, the closer C is to win, the better the predictive capabilities of the fitted model. So we like the larger the better. So win is the best one. Uh, we, we cannot reach that in real life. Um, the concordance index or AUC has a useful interpre interpretation in terms of concordance pace or predicting power. So this is uh, a ROC curve in the area under the curve. Um, so from uh, here, yeah, so this is a vertically, it's called a true positive rate. True positive rate is also called, it's also called, I said that a moment ago, True positive rate is also called, yeah, sensitivity. So, so uh, this horizontally, we have false positive rate. It is also called uh, one subject specificity. Okay. So from here, we can see we have uh, two curves and one straight line diagonal. So 
we, can, we, we, we should be able to tell which one is the best one. So as I said, the area under the curve, um, the larger is better. So at most one, at least zero. So you can see from here, uh, which one is the best one? So this one on the top, this one is the best one. That is excellent. So you can calculate uh, like uh, the area under this curve. So maybe like uh, 70 or 80 percent. So from this graph, you can see when you calculate the AUC, most uh, uh, you should include this area also. This is a point of five. This is a point of five. So you should include this part. This part should be included. Should be included. Um, so the second best, so this one is uh, not as good as the other one, but it's still good. The worst thing is this one, the diagonal. So that one corresponding to the AUC, the area, is 50%. So how to interpret, interpret this, the AUC corresponding or relate to this diagonal straight line? How to interpret that? How to explain that? So this is a diagonal. So in real life, in your real case, so if you got uh, AUC is 50%, what does that mean? What does that mean? So remember, AUC, ROC is used to classify your subjects into two groups, yes or no, having the disease or without the disease, with the disease or without it. So you have classified to one of them. You cannot say uh, neither of them, no. So if you got 50%, you got the AUC, the straight line like this. That's a 50%. How do, you, how do you interpret this if you got this in real life, in your hospital, in your clinic? What, what does that mean? Everybody got a disease? What, what does that mean? So if you got the, the ROC, a straight line, the area under this straight line is 0.5, that is 50%. So if you got that, what does that mean? Yeah, exactly. It's just like you don't need a doctor or physicians. Everybody can sit there to see patients. You just toss a coin to see uh, you, you got the head or the tail. So you just talk, each time you, when a patient or subject come here, you, you just toss it to see positive or negative. So it doesn't help. That, that is the worst case. We don't like that. Okay? So let's try to understand more about uh, uh, sensitivity, specificity. So this is a specific example. So from here you can see uh, we got the uh, blue or red, the test result. Um, so you can see. So this side, this is a dis distribution. The blue one is the distribution for patients with the disease. So this is red one on the left-hand side. That, is, that means without the disease, without the disease. So from this uh, simple figure, you can see there's an overlap at the middle. So if we don't have that overlap, everything becomes very simple. So normally we cannot have a figure without this overlap. So the problem comes from that uh, overlap. So from here, we can see um, well, what kind of disease, what kind of problem, what kind of test you have. You can have such a figure in real life, what kind of thing you can have? What kind of test? What kind of disease? 
So when you see patients, when you try to make your diagnosis result, diagnosis, you, you have to say yes or no about the one shooting disease. So there's the two cases. One is your cutoff points, after you set up your cutoff points, then if it is higher than that point, you got uh, the positive diagnostic, the diagnosis. If you got uh, a number lower than that, you got negative, you got negative result. But not always like this. So for example, like uh, the hypertension, systolic blood pressure, you can set up uh, the cut cutoff point at uh, 140, 140 or 150, okay? So that means that the, the higher of that test result, that score, the more likely that patient got hypertension, okay? So also like uh, diabetes, the blood glucose level, blood uh, glucose level, the, uh, when that is uh, higher than a certain point, you got a positive diagnostic, diagnostic result. But not always like this. I can give you another example, like a bone, the bone density test. So bone density test, uh, so you, you, you can have a result. So for this one, we like the higher the number of your result is better. So very low number of the, your bone density test that indicate that you have osteoporosis. That's right? Okay. So after I give you some examples about this, so, so this graph, for which case? For which case? This graph, for which case? For which case? For the osteoporosis or hypertension, or the diabetes. This one for which one? So remember on your right hand side, that means the patient with the disease. On your left hand side, the patient without the disease. That's right. So then this is for which one? Which case? Huh? Hypertension or diabetes. Okay, that's good. So this one, yeah, we got the, so this side, which we put the, set up the cutoff point on here for the hypertension or the diabetes diagnosis, we set up the cutoff this. So everybody, the test result past this line that indicates positive. Uh, below this, it is uh, negative without such disease, without hypertension, okay? So then, this is the true positives on your right-hand side. This is the true positives. So you can see this area, okay? Um, so then, so this is a, a part, the area is called false positive because this is a distribution for subject without disease, but unfortunately on your right hand side here overlap with this distribution. It's called a false positive. So then this is a uh, true negative here uh, from this one. So this one is a false negative. So actually this area is under this blue curve so that, that this distribution is for the patient, the, the subject with disease. So this is a, the test, if you use the cutoff point here, the test result for below this line, that means uh, test result will be negative, then it's false negative, actually it should be positive. So lots of time we try to search to try to find the best cutoff that points, 
the best one. We try to find that one. So which point is the best cutoff to, to make your diagnosis? So we, we can do some uh, optimization. We can do the study. So from here, you can see you can shift this cutoff point to your right or to your left. So when you change that, you, if you shift this, uh, this vertical line to right or to left, the sensitivity and your specificity also change, also change, also change. So one, one of them increasing, another one decreasing. Okay? You cannot have them, both of them, increasing at the same time. Uh, so for, for example, like here, if, if, I, if I change, uh, if I shift this cutoff point to my right or to your right, so what is the result? Your sensitivity will be increased or decreased. Your specificity will be increased or decreased. If you, if you move this to here, to here, to here, to here, shift to your right, what is the result? Okay. So think of uh, like this. So like a hypertension, your systolic blood pressure, um, you set up at like 140 at a cutoff point, 140. So then if you change that cutoff point to 170, what happened? So 170. 170. Somewhere here. That means giving the subject positive, so you can test like a positive, the probability will increase. Decrease, yeah, that's right, the decrease. So it will be decreased, but specificity will increase. So on the contrary, uh, the opposite, so if you shift that cutoff point from here to here to here to your left, what happened is that just the opposite, okay? It's just the opposite. So suppose you, you, you set up the cutoff point here in order to catch, to have the positive diagnosis for all subjects having hypertension. So if you got the cutoff point very, very low here, everybody got hypertension will be tested as Positive. You see that? If you, your cutoff point is here, you say I set up like 90 or 80 uh, for the systolic blood pressure at a cut point. If higher than that, it's a hypertension. So you see that? So this is just a specific uh, um, change about the cut point. So from here, we can see our sequel comparison. So the first one is a good test. So this one is a, a poor test because the area under the curve is smaller than that. So this one is the best test, uh, test because uh, AUC is one. Uh, here is worst, just like a toss a coin. So the area under the curve, uh, overall measure of the test performance, comparisons between two tests based on difference between estimate AUC. So for continuous data AUC equivalent to man Whitney use statistic, non-parametric test of difference in location between two populations. So here you can see we have four ROC curves and the four area under the curve. So you can see which one is the best one. The best one is this one. So this one is the worst one, so this one is okay, so that's, that's good. So interpretation of AUC. AUC is the probability that the test result from a randomly choosing disease, diseased individual is more indicative of disease than that from a randomly choosing non-diseased individuals, okay? So, what is the AUC? 
AUC is area under the curve, under the curve. So you, it, is, it is used to measure the overall uh, goodness of fit, overall. So you cannot say uh, which cutoff point is better. We just try all the cutoff points to see the AUC. If you just talk about one specific cutoff point, you can calculate the specificity and the sensitivity, but for the one single point, you cannot calculate the AUC. AUC is the overall measurement. When you change your cutoff points from very small to very large, you, you just, uh, the overall measurement. It does not make any sense to talk, up, to talk about the one specific cutoff point. So this is uh, the, the definition. Uh, the P here means percentage of probability. Strictly speaking, we should say uh, probability. So we have two subjects. So one subject, the I subject, uh, we can say the first subject uh, got the disease, the J, DJ is another subject. Okay, we got two subjects. So one subject got the disease, so the first one got the disease, the second one without the disease. So then uh, the value of this, the first subject tests the result like a, a, a systolic blood pressure or the glucose blood, uh, glucose level. So this one, the, the guy uh, having the disease, the value test is big or equal than the guy uh, without the disease, um, the, 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 the score, the probability of that result uh, can be used to measure as your test overall result is AUC. This is the probability definition. So can think of this as a non-parametric distance between the disease, non-disease test result. So maybe this is uh, too theoretical, the definition. Um, but it is a strict definition. So let's come back and revisit that examples about the, the, the cancer and the, the blood test. Uh, the patients with uh, the cancer, um, the blood test result. So this is the first example. So from here, uh, you can see Yeah, so the first examples, um, yeah. First example, this is SARS coding. So we, when we after we have did the SARS programming, we calculate the uh, sensitivity, specificity, PPV, and the PV, like this. We can get this from SARS. If you got a large data set, you got many data sets, you cannot calculate it by hand. So it's very time consuming, this one way. So this is the result. Um, then, um, Okay, this is uh, example one. Um, okay, so the next example is uh, snoring and the heart disease. Um, so the snoring can be measured as uh, numbers, as the ordinal numbers. So never snoring is coded as uh, um, Zero, then is occasionally, and the one or two, then increasing order, coded like this. Then the result uh, should be like uh, with heart disease or without it. So this example is based on a survey of about 2,500 subjects to investigate snoring as a uh, possible risk factors for heart disease, okay? So for this one, uh, we can have the, the result from here. So example two here. So you, if you look at the SARS, 
Um, yeah, the output you can see, the C statistics is about 70%. So if you see the C, C that means the, the, the IUC, the area under the curve. So it's not too bad, it's about 71%. Uh, this is the example, um, example two. Okay, so now let's continue to see this. Uh, so next example is about osteoporosis, osteopenia, and the normal bone density. So we got the, the T-score. Um, if the T-score is uh, negative 2.5 or lower, we got the, it, it, it will be diagnosed as osteoporosis, and otherwise maybe osteopenia. And if the score at negative, the T score is negative one or high, it will be classified as normal. So this is uh, 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 third examples. So this examples which we try to use this example to illustrate how to compare a new test equipment or test method. So traditionally, uh, we use five sides the, of the bone density, bone density, to to make the diagnosis. The, the any subjects got osteoporosis or not? Okay. So traditionally, we have five sides: the hip, right or left, and neck, right or left, PA. So totally, we have five sides. If we have five sides, maybe you say, well, which side we should go with? Which, which side we should use? So we use minimum of these five. So if you use a traditional five sides, most often it's good, but the cost is high. Also for the, dis the people got the disabilities or some people got the obesity, very big, like 500 pounds. So you cannot use that equipment. The guy cannot lie on that bed to do the test. Uh, so this is a problem. Disability or some people in the wheelchair, you, you cannot do that five size test. This is a problem. That one, Dr. Hamdi invented some other way. Uh, we, 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 instead of uh, measure the traditional five sides, we measure the ridges area here. You just put your hand on the table, then everything can be done. Very simple. The cost will be reduced 75%, and uh, um, the result is still good. So everybody can be done. So this, but the problem is, if you recommend this, um, you, you have to have the uh, randomized trial, randomization. You have to present your strong study result uh, to show that. How to do that? We use AUC to compare that. So, so the AUC. Suppose the traditional is the gold standard. Now we got a new method. The new method we just uh, try to do that uh, at the distal ridges, the distal one third, then middle then out. So we try to see uh, which one to see this one is better or not. We just use ROC, AUC modeling, the, the, the method to, to compare that. Then we try to compare that uh, is, uh, to see the, the new which side is the best one. So we should answer this question. The question is, the, the new method, at least the equipment or better, comparing with the traditional one. We have to answer that. How? We just compare AUC. AUC. Okay? So we have, uh, so we have four places to measure that. Okay? So four places, four of them. So we have to answer which one is the best. Now the best one is better or the same thing comparing with the traditional one. 
we use the AUC to convert. So actually, we have four AUCs here, four AUCs here, okay? So this is another example. So next one is uh, about comparing to AUC. The researchers studied six varieties of the wheat for their resistance to infestation by, uh, by the Haitian fly. So Y is the number of damaged plants. N is the total number of plants. So there are four blocks um, and 16 varieties comparing two AUCs. One is uh, using block one and block two. So another one we use block three and the block four. So this is another example to compare two AUCs. So this time compare two AUCs. So last one we compare four AUCs. So this is some formula. So number five, just the extension, uh, the, the example five is just the ex extension of the number four, example four. So here we compare three or more AUCs. So we have three or more. So suppose uh, instead of four blocks, we have six blocks. So block one, two, we got one AUC. Block two and uh, block three and four and four five and six, we got three AUCs. We try to compare them, okay? So this is another example, compare. So, so last example is about uh, retaining a lost wallet and the contents if found. So we have four predictives. Uh, so the dependent variable is uh, yes or no, retain or not. Um, four predictors, gender. Male or female, uh, which gender is more likely to retain, whether in the business school, school or not. Parental punishment at the various age. Parental explain, explanation for punishment. So we, we have three models. So one is, this one is the full model, the largest models. So then we got uh, the second one, we just uh, uh, try to skip to delete this one, the gender, okay? So last one is smallest, reduced model. So we just use two predictors. So among those three models, each model got an AUC. We try to see the three AUCs, they're different or not. We have to answer this question. We have to answer this question. They're different or not, okay? So this is six examples. So my question is, if I let you to classify, classify this uh, six, uh, th there's some examples. How do you classify? There got some different. What is different among those six? Uh, maybe not six. Uh, four or five examples. Can you classify? Can you see any difference among? Those six examples, several examples. Can you classify? <coughs> so if you go back, you can see, so, so this one you compare, so first of all you can see, um, you can compare two AUCs. Or some other examples, you compare two, uh, not two, uh, three or more AUCs. So this is one difference. So it is, uh, technically speaking, it's quite different. If you just compare two AUCs, or you compare three or more, they're different. So another way you can see the difference, can you see difference? So suppose you try to compare the full area measured here, um, so each of them got uh, one AUC. So if you compare this. Another way is just like the fly. The fly, um, that the block, the, uh, block randomized the test uh, about the fly, the Haitian fly. 
So another one, you got three AUCs to compile all two AUCs. So that one is different. Yeah, that's right. So for here, the dist uh, uh, one third, um, the dist four areas actually measured on the same person the same day. So they're correlated. They're correlated. Not independent. They're dependent. But if you talk about the another one, uh, another example here, uh, the last thing, uh, not this one, uh, four, five, uh, this one. So you compare uh, like uh, the, the, the six varieties entries of the wheat and the resistance. So this one, so first time, the one and the two plot. The second time, three and four. The last time is five and six. So those six blocks should be totally independent. Independent. So lots of people, uh, most often, they just try to use it, try to, use, to, try to compare to use some software or some other software to compare uh, two or three or more AUCs. They're blind to the dependence. Dependence. That should be treated different. Dependence on dependent or not. That is quite different. Okay? So if uh, you got the two AUCs, they're independent, we should use this formula to calculate. This formula. AUC one subtract AUC two, then square that. Then divided by stand, uh, the, the variance of the AUC one and the variance of AUC two. This is a chi-square distribution. The degrees of freedom is one. You have to use this. You have to use this. Okay. So, if you compare more than three independent AUCs, so that one is a problem. Is a problem. So until today, many years since the first time the question is brought up. So maybe twenty or thirty, more than thirty years. Past with that problem not resolved, okay? Not resolved. No solutions. But we have some way to do it, not exactly. So this is a one thing. Um, so for the SARS proc logistic, you should be able to use SARS proc logistic with uh, some uh, statement below the model statement to request uh, the test, to request the test, compare several different AUCs. It's called ROC contrast. ROC contrast, you can use that. Most often, the people just use that, no matter dependent or independent. So that, that's not good, but you should distinguish. You should understand the SAS software is designed for paired dependent AUCs, not for independent. This is the key point. So last one is about sample size and power calculation. So if you got a positive group and a negative group, AUC one is 80%. The second one, maybe this one uh, a little bit different, and this one a little bit different. Then you, you have to calculate the sample size before you do the research, submit your ground proposal. You have to say how many subjects you need. So a sample of six, so 360 from the positive and 720 from the negative group achieve 80% power, detect the difference at uh, these levels between two, two diagnostic tests, we see which diagnostic test is better, okay? So this is the, uh, the power, so this is uh, the number of the positive subjects. So there's the four curves for the, the second AUC or AUC2 when you change that. So first one is the point uh, Nine, 90%, okay, so then 82.5%. 80, so when you, 
from this you can see uh, if the difference is large, so we don't need uh, large numbers. Sample size is smaller to have the same power. But when you, the difference, this one, the difference is very small, you need a large sample size to achieve the same power, giving some other things. Okay, so this is uh, about uh, the main contents. Um, so far, any questions? Any questions? Okay. Yeah. Our last slide, the sample size. Okay. Oh, this is uh, by, uh, you, I use the, the software pass, the pass. The software pass, I, I did this. So anybody interested can contact me. I can provide the, the specific uh, steps how to get this. Okay? So, so this is uh, acknowledgement. Uh, I would like to thank to Dr. Ronald Hamdi and uh, Andrew Clark. I also, I would like to thank Dr. Carl Gurkin and uh, for um, the papers, uh, in guidance, instructions, suggestions. Uh, also, I'm grateful to everybody who has attended this seminar. So this is reference. Uh, if you have any questions. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.